Have you ever wanted to make a super large and powerful flyback transformer? Well, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned. Hey fellow experimenters and high voltage enthusiasts, welcome back to my channel. The subject of today's video is creation of a very large, here's my hand by comparison, this is a very large flyback transformer that has about 5,000 or more turns of 32 gauge wire on it. And this is thick uh, Litz wire that I've soldered on for my primary. And I laser printed the primary and secondary formers uh, and tried a lot of different sizes till I could get it right. These can snap together, but I've also uh, epoxied them together for better uh, strength. And that's what I have here. This is three inches in diameter and um, the internal diameter is about 1.5 inches. And uh, this is about 1.5 inches in diameter with the uh, ten, with 10 turns of this thick uh, Litz wire around it wound on it. So I finally put it together and I've used epoxy to hold the terminals on the end. You can see how it goes in here. And then these gaps, uh, uh, alternative gaps, as you see here, are to prevent wire from overlapping. So I'm trying to beat Jay from the plasma channel. He came up with a, a flyback. His was a uh, portable flyback setup. This is gonna, this could, could be portable but we're gonna try and beat his output. So let's begin. The first thing I need to do is find a plastic container that can fit this. So I have each of these, this is silicone coated high voltage wire rated for uh, 30,000 volts. And uh, so between two wires, you've got 60,000 volts of um, insulation. And this is coming out like this. This big core I bought from Amazon, and I can give you the uh, part number of that uh, if you're interested in ordering that. This was homemade, and all the plastic components that you see here are all laser printed. So we're gonna um, put this into this bucket, and then we're gonna fill the bucket up with mineral oil. And I bought a large amount of mineral oil. I have like a gallon of mineral oil here, which I'm gonna put in here, and to get rid of all the tiny microscopic bubbles of air in between the individual turns to prevent internal shorting from occurring, I'm gonna to have to put this whole uh, thing in a vacuum chamber and vacuum it down to, to remove the bubbles because air is your enemy when you're at high voltages and it will lead to short circuiting of individual turns of wire and loss of efficiency or complete uh, failure of the flyback transformer. So let's begin. Let's put this thing in the oil. First of all, let's see if it fits in this bucket, which I stole from the kitchen. Let's see if it gets in there. Yep, looks like it's gonna fit. Yep, it's a perfect fit. And if I put the lid on it, I can make holes in the lid for the leads that go in and come out. Now let's pour the oil into it. I'm still gonna have to wait on my vacuum uh, chamber in order to vacuum this. All right, let's pour it in and submerge the entire coil in oil. By the way, the two halves of the ferrite, that's a C-core, two separate C-cores, the two halves of the ferrite are uh, held together by uh, uh, kaftan tape. There we go, it's submerged now. So we have a good amount of oil in there, as you can see here. With the secondary totally submerged. You can see some bubbles kind of rising out of it. And that process is gonna go on for a while, but it won't get rid of all the air. And what I need to do is to, like I said earlier, put it in the vacuum chamber to remove the remaining traces of air. Now, 
One thing I didn't mention is that ferrite core, which is split into two separate equal halves. If you have the, uh, the ferrite touching, if it's touching each other, it reduces efficiency. And so what I've done is I've put some of that same tape, that Keptan tape on the ends of the ferrite on both sides of the C core to create a little, a tiny gap between the ends so they don't actually make contact with each other because they're separated by the tape. The vacuum chamber I have on order is this. This is a five gallon stainless steel vacuum chamber and it's 11 inches in diameter. Okay, it's finally here, the vacuum chamber and I've set it up and it's got, it, it's got a gauge with, and it's damped with some liquid in the gauge. It's got shut off ball valves. It's got some reinforced um, uh, tubing and I'm using my uh, two stage vacuum pump. I'm gonna leave it like this for about 24 hours. Okay, we have everything connected up. I'm using this small, uh, it's actually not that small, but it's a uh, full bridge of IRFP260 MOSFETs. I'm not sure if these are genuine or not. And uh, I have this wired up to the primary here. And I've got a frequency counter, that loop that you can see there, right there is a frequency counter. Here's my output. I'm using a chicken stick and I've connected the other end of the output to this helping hands here. So we're gonna test it out. We're gonna go for low power. I'm just gonna crank up the Variac now. I'm just gonna put about 12 volts and let's see what frequency it re it's, it's working at. Here it goes. So it's going at 16.8 kilohertz. actually gotten hot so I'm gonna have to use a probably a larger variac for this okay I've replaced the variac for a much bigger one and I'm gonna run it at 36 volts okay folks I finally got done building a power supply for this flyback transformer this is a full bridge of SKM 100 GB IGBTs. These are uh, rated for 100 amps and 1200 volts. So there's plenty of uh, headroom with these things. I'm rectifying the power from the mains or from the Variac with this smaller uh, rectifier. This is rated for 35 amps, 400 volts. So it's a bit underrated compared with these, but it fitted well on the heatsink, so I used it. And then I'm using a gate drive transformer. I'm using gate driver chips. So there's a uh, galvanic isolation here and uh, everything is connected up and we're going to test it out. Let's go. That's some serious output, and I'm only running in 35 volts AC to get this. So I'm a little scared to go up higher. The wire is rated for 30,000 volts DC, but I don't think it's rated for the same voltage AC. Look what happens when I bring them near to each other. There's a lot of corona discharge, and there's a risk of breakdown if the wires touch. The sound of the flyback becomes audible when I slow the video down. It's likely that the flyback at 16.8 kilohertz could bother your pets, especially dogs.
Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video on construction of this high voltage device, which I'm sure is going to be very useful for some of the high voltage experiments that, that I plan to do on this channel. In conclusion, I would say that this device beats the output from Jay from the plasma channels uh, flyback transformer, but his was kind of portable and this is not. So this could be made portable, but I would say this is cheating just a little bit. Thanks for watching folks. And please check back again for more videos on this channel.